Over the next four weeks, I'm gonna be looking at every single movie in the Wrong Turn franchise. Wish me luck. Hey there guys, and welcome back to the channel. So unfortunately, we are still waiting on the release of the reboot of Wrong Turn. We are in lockdown number three here in Ireland. So we have to wait till the end of February till the movie comes out on VOD. So with that guys, I wanted to look back at the original Wrong Turn and the entire series in general. Over the next four weeks, I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts on every single movie in the franchise, but let's kick it off with the original. So the original Wrong Turn was released in 2003, and it stars Desmond Harrington and Eliza Dushku. So I remember when the original Wrong Turn came out, at the time, we hadn't seen a horror movie like that in quite some time. The 90s had been full of Scream, Urban Legend, I Know What You Did Last Summer, all those kind of slashers, but nothing really like the Hills of Eyes or the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We had House of 1000 Corpses, around that time but that was about it it was actually really refreshing to see a movie like this again and i will say guys re-watching it i had a blast it was still a really fun movie to watch particularly what i love about this one though is the characters of course we get some stereotypical characters you know we get the jock and the annoying girlfriend but they're actually dispatched of really quick in the movie instead we spend most of the movie with a lot of likable and relatable characters two characters in particular they are engaged or about to get married and it is just a great way to bring the audience in and relate to those characters. As for Eliza Dushku's character, I thought she was a brilliant kind of final girl in the movie. She's a very strong character and she is there to kind of propel the group and keep them moving forward. Desmond Harrington has a very similar role. He's kind of the male lead in the movie. He's there kind of as a leader to again keep the group moving and keep them surviving. Overall though, all four main characters I enjoyed in the movie. And what I liked is you do relate to them. You really root for them throughout the entire movie. As for the villains, the kind of mountain men or the cannibals in this one, I enjoy them for the most part. Yes, they're not the most original. They are quite cliched at times, but still there was something likable about all three of them. I also enjoyed how they were hunters in the movie. That was a really good twist. You know, they had bow and arrows, they had axes, and a lot of different weapons to hunt these characters down with. I just did think it kind of separated them from other villains we'd seen in movies like this as well as that there was a lot of really good jump scares they enjoyed hunting their prey that was their whole thing you know they had bone arrows they had axes they had a lot of great creative weapons and of course that led to really interesting creative kills the kills in the movie although there's not a lot of them in there they were quite creative and they were also quite shocking again because of that bone arrow a character could just be running through the woods and they're taken out in seconds now one thing this movie did really well is build tension. Throughout the entire movie in multiple different scenes they were conscious layering situations on top of each other in really cool ways. One in particular that I loved in the movie is when our main cast of characters discover this cabin or this house of these cannibals. It's cliche we've seen it before. I enjoyed how it actually escalated. These characters discover this situation they find themselves in. There's bodies in this house. There's really strange things happening and they know they have to get the hell out of there. Once they decide that, of course, our cannibals come home and they have to hide and wait for their opportunity to leave the house. I really enjoyed it. I thought just how they built that. Even when they're trying to escape, it's pretty much a silent scene as they're trying to get out of this house. When the cannibals discover them, there's a chase scene that ensues right afterwards. So again, they just constantly built and built and built layers of tension before bringing it all together in a climactic chase scene that happens kind of throughout the entire movie there's one as well in a watchtower that's just as exciting as for the look and feel of the movie it did definitely bring me back to 80s horror it definitely had that feel to it but with a modern twist it was updated of course for modern audiences and it worked extremely well i do remember when this one got released it didn't do too well at the time people enjoyed it but they did kind of say there was something missing i know the texas chainsaw massacre remake came out i think about six months later and definitely did a better job but overall it's still a really fun watch as for the negatives of this movie that's probably it it's a cliched movie that's not very original but at the same time you know what you're getting when you go into this one overall there's a lot of really great action sequences there's some really interesting and fun kills and the characters as i said are very relatable but guys what did you think of the original wrong turn are you a fan of the movie and if you are are you excited about the reboot make sure guys you let me know in the comments down below remember guys you can of course subscribe to the channel you can pop on your notification bell so you don't miss any movies i review in the series now if you do want to see more videos like this one make sure guys you click the link on the right and i will see you in the next one